name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Alleluia. Let us pray to the Lord for mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Easter, Good, Good Shepherd Sunday, is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost. And I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured. And I will strengthen the weak. And the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I forgot to say that last week, and, but I remembered in the second service, and so I promised the second service, I said I'm going to remember to say that in the first service, because friends, we are in Easter, and really every Sunday is Easter, really every day for a Christian is Easter. We are Easter people. And as we are Easter people, today we're going to look at the gospel lesson. We'll probably throw in some other texts as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved in the Lord, the Apostle John lays out for us one of his visions in the Revelation, chapter 14. It's probably an image that's more known from Revelation. It is an image of 144,000 of God's people, the complete number of the church of God. And they're standing on Mount Zion. And there with them, in the midst of them, is the Lamb. The Lamb who was slain. And these 144,000 stand marked with the name of the Lamb and the Father on their forehead. They stand together singing the song that that comes from heaven that only they are able to sing on the earth. These are the redeemed, bought by the blood of the Lamb out from the world. And John tells us that wherever the Lamb went, these 144,000 went with them. Isn't that interesting? The, the Lamb is the shepherd. This is a vision that takes John's breath away. This is a vision that we see actually in the Gospel lesson. When Jesus talks about the people of God united. Because they've got one shepherd. And these people are one flock. And that's the title for our sermon this morning. One flock. We're talking about the fundamentals of the faith, the basic teachings, and right now we're talking about baptism. One of the gifts of baptism is that it unites us into one family, one flock. We are united, united in God Himself as the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one because we have been baptized we have been united into God Himself. Which makes us then united to one another. We're part of a family of faith. United with all the saints of God. Adam and Eve. That's your people. Abraham and Sarah. You're united with them. Mary, Joseph, Peter, St. Paul. You're with them. United. United in a common cause, a common purpose. United in an, in an adventure. United in a cosmic Reality. You are part of a community of believers, a family that is of cosmic significance, that is of eternal significance. You are gathered together with Christ 
and therefore, against all odds, you defeat all the evil enemies, the devil, and all of hell, the world. You overcome the world. You overcome death itself because you are united. And this is a mystery. We were told, we're told in Ephesians, St. Paul says that this unity of Jew and Gentile, male, female, slave, free, the fact that we are united together is actually the way, listen to this, where God proclaims His wisdom to the authorities, to the rulers in the spiritual realm. God makes His wisdom known through the unity of the church which God has called us into when we were baptized, sealed with His name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that, friends, is a miracle. Jesus talks about being the shepherd of sheep. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like maybe herding cats would be a better metaphor. But Jesus is Lord, and so he gets to say it the way he wants to say it. But this unity, we don't quite see it fully. We see the tip of the iceberg. We see a lot of the problems, maybe, but the the signs are there. We see glimpses of it. It's like this unity that we're talking about is like the iceberg above the water, but there is this profound depth, a profound reality of the unity of the church. And every once in a while, you get to see those glimpses. It's just like Jesus. Jesus looked like any other human being, right? But then every once in a while, a glimpse, a miracle, the Mount of Transfiguration. The light would sort of come out just a little bit and you would get a glimpse that Jesus was not just a human, that something else was going on. So it is with his body, the church. We look very, very human. And yet, there's glimpses. There's a pastor from India who said, quote, most of what happens in Christian churches, including even miracles, can be duplicated in Hindu and Muslim congregations. You catch that? Things happening in the church could be duplicated. Even miracles could be duplicated in Hindu and Muslim congregations. And then he goes on to say, but in my area, only Christians strive, however ineptly, to mix men and women of different castes, races, and social groups. That's the real miracle. Jew, Greek, slave, free, male, female. We get those glimpses of God's people striving awkwardly often enough, but striving to live in unity with one another. And this pastor says, that's the miracle. And the devil hates it. The devil... That old wolf seeks to pounce on the flock. And what does he want to do? Scatter them. That's his game. From the very beginning, Adam and Eve, the devil told his lies, taught falsely. Adam and Eve believed that they could decide for themselves, not listen to the voice of God, Instead, listen to their own desires and eat from the tree. And what happened? Not unity. They were cut off from God. They were cut off from one another, hiding from each other, blaming one another. And that's the way it's been ever since. People striving after their own ways. After all, we live in a culture that prizes rugged individualism. I ask Alexa to play me some jazz. 
first song she plays is Frank Sinatra, I Did It My Way. This is our culture. This is the work of the devil. This is what he seeks to do. We live in a place where there is no-fault divorce. People get tired of it, and so they just say, well, I'm done. And they go their own way. This is the desire of the devil. His work is always to steal, kill, destroy. And he knows the best way to do that. You, you've, watched, you've watched enough like nature shows. If you want to steal, kill, and destroy, what do you got to do? Scatter the flock. So what are we going to do? Well, we listen to the voice of the shepherd. You know that that's it. That's that's the uh, that's the thing we get. That's the thing that distinguishes or or describes us in the text. Jesus says, "They will." Listen. I'm going to bring these other sheep, and he says, "They will listen to my voice." Christ gathers us. Let's just back it up. Christ, for us and for our salvation, he, He's the one who brings this unity. He's the one who's brought us together. He's the one who left His place in heaven and for us and for our salvation came down and was conceived by the Virgin Mary, of the Holy Spirit by the Virgin Mary. Jesus is the one who laid down His life and took it up again. Jesus is the one who has sought us out. Jesus is the one who called to us and called us to faith. Jesus is the one who brought us into the household, into the family of faith through the waters of holy baptism. Jesus is the one who's going to maintain our unity. Because Jesus isn't going anywhere. The, the, uh, the hired hand, he bolts, but not Jesus. Jesus is still with the flock. There's nothing that causes him to fear. There's nothing that stands outside of his control or his thinking. And so Christ is at work doing what is necessary to keep the flock. And so he continues to stay with us and he continues to call to us. And our job is to listen. Thank you. <laughs> A couple of people I think were listening. To listen. This is how it works. Christ saves. Christ unites. And He does it with His voice. The voice of His Word. He calls us. We listen. That's who you are, beloved. You're the called. You've been called, and Christ is continuing to call. And so why not live? Why not walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called? That's not my idea. That's St. Paul, by the way. Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That sounds like work to me. Well, it is. We're going to have to swallow our pride, bite our tongue, sacrifice, make compromises, not on the Word of God, but with one another. 
But I thought it was all Christ's work. I thought he was the one. Well, yes, it is all a divine work. It is Christ who's doing these things. But have you ever noticed that while it's the work of God, it's a divine work, yet there is this human element. We strive. We are eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And I was thinking about this this week because we had an all-boards meeting. And one of the things that I love about this congregation is so I'm, I work with these, the, the leaders of this congregation, and just because I say it doesn't mean they obey it. <laughs> what I mean is I'll say, well, this would be a good idea, or we should do this, or here's this thing. And if someone's not quite there, they'll, they'll just come up and ask me. Or say, I don't understand, or I don't agree. But they do it gently. And I, never, I don't feel attacked. And I, don't, I, think, I think it's because maybe they love me. And they know I love them. And they love this congregation. And they want to be faithful to Jesus. And so we will talk about it and we'll open up the scriptures and and I'll say, well, here's maybe God's word. And then they might say, okay, now I see it now. Okay. Or I'll say, you know what? You got a good point. I, you know, I'll rethink this or we'll do, you know. There's compromise. There's, there's, there's understanding. We swallow our pride. We, we work together. Because that's what we're called to. We're eager to do. We're not lazy about it. We're eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Which means sometimes we just put up with one another. In fact, do me a favor. Humor me. And just say to your neighbor, neighbor, I'll put up with you. You put up with me. That's what you're called to. Because you're baptized. That's why we're here today. Here we are, part of the 144,000, gathered together from all the ends of the earth on Mount Zion, that is the church. We are the baptized with the seal of God on our foreheads. And we've gathered to sing the songs of heaven that only we know because we hear the voice. We sing loud. We we call out, we sing, we, we praise God, we are gathered in this holy liturgy, united around this word, and the devil can't stop us, and the devil's work is undone, and the wisdom of God is proclaimed to the spiritual realms and throughout the whole world. We stand together. Because we are part of one faith, one baptism. We are one flock, united under one shepherd. In his name. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Shepherd of Israel, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sought out your sheep and gathered us into your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every wolf and snare. Lord, in your mercy. O God, send faithful shepherds to care for your flock here and scattered throughout the world. Keep them devoted to you and your truth, and so turn them in dutiful service toward your people. Spare us from hirelings who would serve ego, belly, or the world's doctrines. Give discerning ears to your sheep to listen for the voice of Christ, our good shepherd. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you have put our sins to death in Christ's body on the tree, also bring life to our faith by his Spirit that in your continual grace we may bring forth the fruit of holy lives. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, through the Paschal Lamb, you have wrought peace between man and God. By your gift of good government, grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the first fruits of Christ's life from the dead, you secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences. Bless also with temporal health and well-being those who suffer among us, remembering especially Tim, Tom, Myra, Maxine, Jerry, Nadine, Kay, D, Viola, and Linda. Grant them aid in this moment, and even more so, true immortal health in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, all good gifts come from you. We thank you for the successful surgery that Dick LeBeau underwent and his continued healing. We also continue to pray for Don and our unborn child, that both mother and child would be kept healthy and safe, and that the child would be brought to the unity of the flock through the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our shepherd, you calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death, and you prepare the holy table of your son's testament in the presence of our enemies. Grant us repentant and faithful hearts. In every tribulation or besetting sin, lead us to find comfort and strength in your overflowing mercy given us here in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, of your... Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that even as this shepherd knows us and helps in every affliction, we also may know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who sacrificed for us and for the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive, <coughs> we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross, gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to You, Almighty God, that You have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore You that of Your mercy, You would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward You and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.